In this tutorial, I'm going to use the least cost method to find the initial basic feasible solution of the transportation problem that is uh, three sources F1, F2, and F3, or destinations A, B, C, and uh, D. So, using the least cost method, we start by looking at uh, the least cost for each uh, of uh, the given cells there. And uh, the unit costs that we are having there are the ones that are in the small squares there. And uh, the least cost that we see there, we are having a five. But we also see that we have a tie there. We also have another five there. When using the least cost, if we have uh, ties like this, when we have a five and a five, what we do is we look at the least numbered row first. So we are having row number one, which is F1, and row number two, which is F2. So we have to allocate in row number one, the one which is F1. Then we move on to the second row, F2. So in this case, we have to allocate in a cell F1D first. And when you are looking at cell F1D, we will look at uh, its supply is a 30, and uh, the demand there is a 25. So to see how much we can allocate, we take the minimum of the 30 and the 25. So we should allocate 25 units there. But the moment we allocate 25 units there, that would mean that we would have reached the demand requirements for destination D. So we can no longer allocate anything in that column. So I'll cross them out here and here. Because we can no longer allocate because we have met the demand requirements for of this uh, destination D. I now move on to the second one now, where we are looking at the other five there on F2. So on F2A there, that's where we are now supposed to allocate. And we look at the supply, we are having a 40. The demand is a 35. To see how much we can allocate, we take the minimum of the 35 and the 40, and it's a 35. So we allocate 35 units there. And the moment we allocate 35 units there, that means we would have met the demand requirements for destination A. So we can no longer allocate uh, any more in uh, this column. So I'll cross out here and I'll cross out here indicating that we can no longer allocate. And um, the cells that we have crossed out, when you are looking at uh, the list costs, we no longer consider them. So now we have to go on and look at the next list cost that we are having where it's not crossed out or does not have an allocation. And the next list cost there is a seven, which is here. So for this seven, we look at the supply, it's a 50 and the demand is a 32. So to see how much we can allocate, we take the minimum of uh, the 32 and the 50, which gives us a 32. So we have to allocate uh, 32 units there. But the moment we allocate 32 units there, that means we would have met the demand requirements for destination C. So I would have to cross out this part, indicating we can no longer allocate, and cross out this part, because we can no longer allocate there, because we have already met the demand requirements of 32 for that uh, destination C. I now move on to the next list cost. We are now having an eight. So we are looking at this eight here. And when you are looking at that 8, we consider the supply is a 30. But when you are looking at that row there, the supply, the capacity for F1 is 30, but we have already allocated a 25. So for us to get to the supply capacity there, it will be 30 minus the 25. So we are looking at 5 units when you are looking at the supply constraint. And for the demand constraint, we are looking at 28. So to see how much we can allocate in that cell, we are looking at the minimum of the 5 and the 28, so we have to allocate 5 units there. And then we we'll move on to the next list cost we are seeing is a 9 there. And for the 9, we we'll consider the supply, it's a 50, but we've already allocated the 32 there. And uh, for us to get to the supply capacity there, it will be 50 minus 32, which gives us an 18. So when you are looking at the supply constraint, we are looking at 18. Then for the demand, it's at 28. So to see how much we can allocate, we take the minimum of the 18 and 28, which gives us an 18. So we have to allocate 18 units in this cell. 
And then we now go on to the last uh, cell there where we have uh, the unit cost of in 11. And uh, to see how much you can allocate, we look at uh, the supply, the 40. But you should take note that we have already allocated a 35 in this row. So looking at the supply constraint there, we will be looking at 40 minus 35, which gives us a 5. And uh, for the demand there, we are having a 28, but we have already allocated 5 and 18. So what we'll be looking at is um, 28 minus uh, 18 minus 5, which gives us a 5. So in this case, we can allocate 5 units in uh, on this cell. So after having made all the allocations, all the cells have been catered for, what is just left is just for us to check if everything is balanced. So I check for row by row, then I go to the columns. For the first row there, we are having allocations of 5 and 25, which add up to 30, which is meeting the supply constraint there. For the second row, we are having 35 and 5, which adds up to 40, which uh, is uh, catering for the supply there, which is 40 there, so we are okay. For the third row, we are looking at um, of 18 and 32, which add up to 50, which satisfies uh, the capacity there of uh, 50. And then now moving on to the columns, we are having an allocation of 35 in the first uh, column there which uh, meets the demand there of 35 and uh, for the next one we are having allocations of 5 5 and 18 which add up to 28 which is the demand that we have there the 28 so for this one you're okay and then for the next one we are having an allocation of 32 our demand is 32 so for this column you're okay and uh, for the last one, we are having an allocation of 25 and the demand is uh, 25. So for this one, it's uh, okay as yes, well, it's balanced. So if everything is uh, balanced, it's okay. And then we have just to make an interpretation of uh, that uh, initial basic feasible solution. So I'll go on and draw a table. We have the destination, the allocation, and the cost. From uh, source F1, to destination B, we are allocating five units. Five units at a unit cost of eight, and the cost will be five times eight, which gives us a 40. From uh, source F1 to destination D, we are allocating 25 units. 25 units at a unit cost of five, and the cost will be five times 25, which gives us a 125. Then from uh, source F2 to destination A, we are allocating 35 units. 35 units at a unit cost of 5, and the cost will be 35 times 5, which gives us 175. From F2 to B, we are allocating 5 units. 5 units at a unit cost of 11, and the cost will be 5 times 11, which gives us 55. From F3 to B, we are allocating 18. 18 at a unit cost of 9, and the cost will give us 18 times 9 which gives us 162. Lastly, from F3 to C, we are allocating 32 units. 32 units at a unit cost of 7, which gives us a cost of uh, 224. Then we go on and uh, add those costs to get the total cost. And the total cost there is uh, 781. And the initial basic feasible solution using the least cost method is giving us a uh, a cost of uh, 781.